Well, ladies and gents, welcome to the Gaming Apocalypse. I'm Wraith, and this is the definitive edition of Telltale's The Walking Dead. Season 4, Episode 4. This is the epilogue, or finale episode, of the entirety of Clementine's story. Not sure where this is going to go from here. But two quick reminders before we jump into it to find out. Number one, if you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, use the notification bell, that way you know whenever new videos from me come out. Secondly, remember that you are an awesome person. So, be awesome to others, okay? All right, let's jump in and see where this epilogue takes us. And to be fair, this could be like the last five minutes of the game. I honestly don't have a clue. I like how Rosie is basically just listening to AJ now. Oh, I get what they're doing. That is clever as hell. The still not bitten team. That is such a cool way to do the the end credits. Instead of just a scroll that, you know, people may or may not sit through and it's got copyrighted music, so I can't play any of that. It's, instead, it's just doing it like it's graffiti on the wall. Because, I mean, the walls have always been graffitied in this place. That's super clever. I love the design idea to do that. That's such a great idea. And you can do it kind of like people's signatures almost as well. In fact, that's literally what they did, it looks like. It's like some of it's, yeah, that's definitely what they did. It was like, some of it's very artistically done like graffiti. Some of it's done like signatures. That is such a smart idea. Oh, Skybound Games. Okay, okay, in you go. Okay, got a couple more things to place, including a skull fragment, which I'm still not sure. I what. wonder who you used to be. Why did we pick up a human skull? So weird. The mushroom's still around? That looks like it tastes bad. Because I won't lick it. Mm -hmm. I won't. <laughs> I like how Rosie's like, uh -huh, sure you won't. I don't know how this works. This seems like really hard drawing. I'll ask Clem later. It'd be fair if you take a magnet to it, you can draw it normally. Still scary. <laughs> it's cool getting Why to see it from. Did Clem collect so many skulls? Seeing this stuff from AJ's perspective versus from, say, Clementine's, is just kind of cool. This is a good one. Like it's protecting us. Yeah, that's how it was seen back in the day. A lot of Native American tribes would have agreed with you on that. Or whatever the correct modern day terminology for it would be. <clears throat> it's too bad he won't be able to draw another one. And I hope you have extra crayons wherever you are, Tin. Hmm. You know what? I'm a great artist. <laughs> you hear me, Rosie? Oh, great. It's in there going full on art critic on himself. It's so cool looking. I wonder if it has magic powers. No. Hmm. 
Nah. I'm sure if you talk to the right person, they'll tell you it has magical powers, but no, it doesn't. Hey there, Alvin Jr. You ready to rock? So cool, Disco Broccoli. Like, the coolest. Mm, don't know if I'd go that far, but alright, sure. Omar didn't want this back. He said, well, it didn't work, did it? <laughs> I wonder if you're hungry. For bugs. Find a bug. Go, Erickson! I still don't know why you say that. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could have at least pet her. It's like Lewis in a box. Yeah, only the box is tuned. Unlike Lewis. Okay. I guess we're putting her hat back. About to hit me with another copyrighted song? No. Yes. <sighs> of course they are. Well, whatever. All right. You and 64% of players trusted AJ to make his own decisions. 36% said he wasn't ready to make his own. Okay. Well, fair. 64% let Violet rename the school herself. 10% renamed the school Happy Sunshine Land. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's really intimidating right there, let me tell you. 12% uh, renamed the school The Rotting Shithole. That, that's what I want to call my home. 14% renamed the school Castle Violet, despite her protests. Okay. Seventy-seven percent of players asked AJ to kill rather than to let you become a walker. And only twenty-three percent asked you to, AJ to leave. Wow. Forty percent spared ten after be he became a walker. Sixty percent shot ten after he became a walker. Interesting. I would not have expected that, but. Hmm. Okay, so this is just the summing up page. Lily, dead. Finally. Only three seasons too late. Lily knew you were going to be a problem when you were finally reunited. She realized AJ's potential as a soldier almost immediately. Yeah. You and 4% of players left Violet feeling vulnerable. She was touched when you described her as a close friend. She felt vengeful after watching Raiders take Lewis. She was embarrassed when you didn't want to hear why she was sent to Erickson. And grief-stricken about 10. 
Only 4% of players left Violet feeling vulnerable. Interesting. Fifty-two percent left James feeling conflicted. James was thankful that you respected his beliefs, spared the walkers, felt elated when you f said there might be more to walkers, but relieved uh, was relieved when you said you wouldn't let AJ become a killer. Okay, well that's pulling from much earlier. Ten is dead. I was happy you let him draw you in his picture of the afterlife. Felt resentful when you revealed Marlin's weakness as a leader. Felt hopeful after sharing his belief that the Walker age would end someday. Eighty-five percent left Lewis feeling shaken. Lewis felt discouraged when you chose to spend time with Violet instead of him. Traumatized after his capture. Well, yeah. He was pretty heavily tortured. And Ten's death has left him feeling devastated. Hmm. No. Oh, I missed an object. That sucks. What Clem taught me. First thing when you enter a new place is to check all the windows. <laughs> to be fair, there weren't that many great options there. I, I think there might have been an option to ch look for an exit, which would probably would be smarter, but whatever. <laughs> Always aim for the head, yeah. When you have to apologize, be as honest as you can, even if it's really hard. Yep. Eat real slow or you might accidentally perp or fart real bad or choke. Good life lesson there. It's not nice to take other people's stuff. Also very true. If people try to steal from you, it's okay to try and kill them. No, no, that... It's okay to stop them. D d I think you got the wrong lesson there. Sleeping in a bed is way better than sleeping on the ground. Depends on the bed, but generally, yes. I was wrong to kill Marlon when he wasn't, or because he wasn't a threat when I shot him. But Lily wasn't a threat when I shot her, and that's that was okay. It gets confusing. If you have to atone something, it's hard, but people will forgive you. Whenever you're scared, just remember to breathe. Oh, there's even more. Okay. The monsters won't be here forever. Killing is never easy or fun, so take it real seriously. Sometimes torturing people is okay, I guess. It's depending on the situation. Doctors can help you with your trauma, but I think they're all dead. I mean, it's not just generic doctors. They're kind of specialized for that stuff, but sure. I thought maybe there were people inside monsters, but that was dumb. There's nothing in the middle. I mean, yeah, unfortunately. Lying can help if you really need something. Not a great lesson to learn, but all right, yeah. If someone asks you to tell... Someone asks to tell you something real bad they did a long time ago, say no thanks. Uh, yeah. I guess I can kind of see that. It can go either way. Growing up too fast can make you seem scary, but people will still have to trust you to make the hard calls. And the hard calls are always unfair. That is so true right there. Congrats, kid. You, you did learn the right lesson there. Uh, your choices. I don't know what this is supposed to mean, but... Sure. I was right. There was the option to take the uh, romantic route. And I chose not to do that. Oh, okay. So this is... Which thing you chose to do is the red. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 
Interesting. I would just walk through and start killing them all. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, where Violet would have lost probably a hand if I hadn't done that. I don't know about the Lily thing. So what all would have happened here? I'm actually not sure what would have happened. Well, yeah, I am. Allowing AJ to make the decisions versus Clem. Which led to AJ shooting 10. However... That looks like Lewis would have been taken or eaten somehow. Or Violet would have gotten chomped on. It doesn't seem like there's really much of a choice with regards to... Clem. And then... Yeah. Choosing to not kill Ten, the walker. But you would have had that instead, potentially. Hmm. Interesting game. Interesting way to wrap the game up, too. All right. There you have it. That was the epilogue, the finale of Clementine's story. And to the best of my knowledge, they are not going to make another one. Um, I don't think they even have the license to do another one anymore. So, And to be fair, there's not really a need to do another one. Like this, this closed everything off. It tied up everything nicely. There's... I still kind of want to know what's going on in Richmond. We're talking about Richmond being a war zone and apparently Delta was fighting with them. So part of me does want to know what's going on there, but I don't feel like it needs to be shown. And as a matter of fact, here. Just so there's a little background music, because there's no reason to just sit on the menu screen while I talk. Um, but like I was saying, I, I do kind of want to know what's going on with Richmond versus the Delta people. But I don't feel like it's really necessary. I don't feel like I need to know about all that stuff. In so far as, like, we need another game. I feel like Javier's story was told. It's closed. It doesn't need to be touched on again. Same thing with Clementine and AJ. I don't feel like their story needs to be approached again. I was wondering if we, we were gonna get, like, before they showed that Clem is still alive... I was wondering if we were going to get uh, somehow, like, her and Lee reuniting or something. Some kind of weird thing. Like, when it was showing that Fort McCarroll story, or McCarroll Ranch, whatever it was called. When it was showing that little tidbit, which was actually a nice thing to throw in. I was wondering if, like, that was how Clem and Lee were going to first, were going to meet back up. Because it just started out with Clem on a horse in the middle of the woods. It made no sense. But instead we got what we got, which was in its own way actually considerably nicer and honestly far better story writing. So yeah, I've, I've got no real complaints. I'm still a little bit confused on a couple of the prompts that were like, I'm hammering away <laughs> at it and it's just not accepting it. That part confused me a little bit. I'm still not sure how I did that shift E that like let me jump across the bridge the third or fourth time I tried. I don't know what I did differently that time that it, it worked, but okay, it, it worked. So I guess that's all that matters, right? So anyways, overall top tier game. Um, I'm curious to know 
for those that have been watching all the way through, what did you decide to do with your playthrough? How did your playthrough differ from mine? What did you do differently? Or did you do everything? Did you make the same choices I did? Because this seems like a series that you could go back and replay making different choices and actually get some different endings. Like maybe not the first season. The first season feels like you're kind of locked in. Second and third seasons, especially the third season, it feels like you're not locked into very much. It feels pretty open-ended, like you can do whatever you want to in that season. And same thing here. Like It feels like, depending on the choices you make, you might actually get some fairly different outcomes. Which is always exciting to see player agency actually matter in a game. So, yeah. That's it for... The Walking Actually, no, that's not it for The Walking Dead. I'm sorry. I take that back. The Definitive Edition also includes something about Michonne. Hang on, I'm, I'm jumping back through the Definitive menu real fast. Uh, season Select. Do, 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 do. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So, The Walking Dead. This is Season 1. Season two, A New Frontier, the final season, Michonne. On a buyer past, threatened by her present, can Michonne keep her humanity as the bodies pile higher? I do remember Michonne from the TV show. But I don't know how it's going to tie in here. Hmm. I do remember Michonne from the TV show. But I don't know if this is going to be like her origin prequel story or if this is going to be something that happens when she's away from the show for a while. I don't even know how long this is. If this is going to be like full five episode thing or if it's just a single episode. I, I don't know. But we're going to jump into that next. So that way, once I've beaten that, I've beaten the entirety of the Definitive Edition, and then we can look on to something else. Um, I know Telltale made a Game of Thrones game, which sounds really interesting. It also made something to do with, like, Grimm's fairy tales? That it's a murder mystery or something? Which, that has me intrigued as well, so... I don't know. We'll, we'll poke around when the time comes, but first, Michonne will be next. All right, well, I've rambled on far too long as it is, so if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Help keep the YouTube overlords happy. If you want to see what goes on with this Michonne thing, or to see any of the other videos that I post, well, subscribe, use the notification bell. That way you know when I'm uploading. Till next time, thank you very much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Remember that life does get rough sometimes, so good luck, have fun, stay awesome. I'll catch you in the next one.